Yo, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. We're at the computer today and we're gonna be breaking down the best body posture for mountain biking and why I think Jackson Goldstone is the pinnacle of riding technique. So let's get into it. Taking a look here at this photo of Jackson, what we're gonna be focusing on is the position of his hips and his back. His back is straight, he is hinged at his hips, and his knees are over his feet. What he is accomplishing with this form is a stable spine and mobile hips. With his spine being in a neutral position, which is the position of your back when standing, this allows him to separate the movement of his spine and his hips. The benefit of this is that as he receives feedback from the trail, such as in this clip, his body is able to move freely, compensate as needed, and as a result, he's able to prevent major crashes. Additionally, riding with a neutral spine position engages your glutes and hamstrings, which provides you with added strength on the bike. If we take a look at this photo, Jackson is in a slight left corner, and as you can see, he's in the same fundamental body posture as the previous examples. However, in this case, the benefit of his position on the bike is even weight distribution between his tires, which helps him with cornering in this instance and braking in other instances. Here are a few other clips from Jackson's winning Val de Sol run in 2023, which really show his technique. This clip is a simple section of the track, but shows Jackson's resting attack position on the bike. When slowed down, you can see his straight back, hinge at the hip, and knee placement roughly over his feet. Looking at this clip, he is riding an absolutely ridiculous line and making it look completely effortless, maintaining perfect body posture throughout the section. Now that we've broken down the key points of Jackson's riding technique, let's look at how you can incorporate these into your own riding and what you will gain from implementing them. To begin, it's important to note that we're discussing body posture in regards to your default attack position. However, your body posture on the bike needs to be fluid and adjust to the trail as needed. As you can see in these clips, Jackson's knees and upper body are moving as needed down the track. Some important factors to note that will affect your body posture on your bike are for one, the size of your bike as the reach will determine how spread out you are. And for two, just your build. Depending if you know, you're 6'5", 5'5", you know, people of different stature are gonna look different on the bike and you just need to find what works best for you, but these core principles will remain the same. To show you how you can adjust your own riding, we're gonna do a brief case study on a rider who in my opinion has had pretty terrible form in the past, but has been able to fix it in recent years. Here's me in 2019, that rider with terrible form I was talking about. My back was crazy rounded and my elbows were ridiculously low. What you lose from having the round back is the hip mobility, as discussed earlier, as well as the loss of strength from your glutes and your hamstrings. With the elbows being low, although this is not the main focus of the video, you lose strength over the front end of the bike as well as additional control. At this point in time, I wasn't super into breaking down my riding and my body posture. However, over time, this has seriously changed. Over the next few years, things began to improve slightly for me, but it wasn't the result of a conscious effort. As I continued to push myself and ride harder and faster, especially in the bike parks, my body posture had to improve just to keep up with me. I was just learning out of necessity, not through conscious focus. If we look at these clips from 2021, my form is better, but there are still glimpses of my old self, such as in this little gap. My elbows are super low and my back is really hunched over. I'm in the air, which makes it less catastrophic, but it's still not ideal. In 2022, my form continued to improve slightly. However, this time, I started to get into studying other riders. Then last year, I began to really nerd out on this and things got a lot better for me, as you can see in these clips. The Izzo Raw video I filmed last year was a good test for me and the work I'd been putting in. The video was me simply riding a trail and there weren't any flashy tricks to make up for some poor riding in between. My back position is pretty solid. My knees are roughly over my feet. I am hinged well at my hips and my elbow position is adequate. I still have a lot of work to do, but from four years earlier, the comparison is night and day in my opinion. Here's a direct comparison from 2019 to 2023. Four years made quite the difference. To recap, 
recap, the three main points to focus on for your riding body posture are to maintain a neutral spine position, hinge at your hips, and keep your knees roughly over your feet. One additional thing that has helped my body posture on the bike a ton over these past few seasons has been strength training. Paul Burchard, who's a really close friend of mine, he's a strength coach and an orthopedic physical therapist, has helped me a ton with this. And if you are looking to do some work off the bike to improve your riding, his email will be down in the description below. All in all, the whole point of focusing on your body posture is to have added strength on the bike, which will in turn lead to added confidence. With good body posture, you'll be able to ride harder, safer, and get more out of mountain biking. For me personally, focusing on my body posture allowed my riding to reach new heights, and I hope this video can help you do the same. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the support, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.